Now to a man whose career makes him ideally placed to comment on the growing financial ructions in the U.S. and Europe. Bob Kimmett served as Deputy Secretary of the U.S. Treasury in the George W. Bush administration, and he's been U.S. Ambassador to Germany. He now chairs the Deloitte Center for Cross-Border Investment, and I spoke with him earlier. Bob Kimmett, welcome to Late Line Business. Thanks. Nice to be with you in Sydney. Now, talk about timing. I, I see from your resume that you were once a managing director of Lehman Brothers for four years t until 1997. Uh, but given that you've got that banking experience, we're looking now at a likely downgrade of the three French banks today. I'm just wondering whether, whether we are also looking down the barrel of a bank crash. Um, I certainly hope not. I don't see any evidence to suggest that there is a bank crash coming in Europe or elsewhere. I think the fundamental fact is that both in Europe and the United States, governments are now focused on the central question of the proper role, size, and cost of government. We need to balance commitments and resources to lay a firm fiscal foundation for the policies of growth and job creation that are needed. The banking system, of course, is a very important part of that. I don't have details on the story that you're just reporting, but clearly this is something that's being watched closely, both by markets but also by government officials and regulators. Mm, because uh, certainly if, if there is some sort of orderly default, as, it, as is being talked about now even within Germany, presumably that might put a lot of pressure on banks. Well, I think you're talking about an orderly default for Greece. Uh, that's been a, a topic of discussion for some time. I think in Germany right now the focus is on the vote coming up on the 29th of this month on the expanded uh, fund facility uh, for Europe. I do think, however, Europe has been engaged in a set of important tactical steps. They now need to come up with a strategic concept and certainly move forward to closer fiscal coordination, just as they've been able to do on the monetary side with the European Central Bank. What is all this stress on the markets doing for business investment around the world? And in particular, a, a, a rise, I guess, of protectionism, which began after the global financial crisis. Well, actually, uh, quite interestingly, the G20 and its communiques, going all the way back to the leaders' meeting in Washington in November of 2008, quite correctly said we have to resist tr protectionism, both trade and investment, as we come out of crisis. The record has actually been better than expected, and that is barriers have been kept relatively lower to both trade and investment protectionism. I think, though, your question correctly notes that the real uncertainty that is keeping money on the sidelines is economic uncertainty. Where we are seeing investment is from what I call complicated investors, that is sovereign wealth funds, state-owned enterprises, and others who are sitting on large amounts of money accumulated in part because of global imbalances. And we are seeing an uptick of actually about a 5 percent rise in global foreign direct investment last year as a result. Now, is that a good thing, the rise of the sovereign wealth fund? I know that China's SOEs, are, three of them are now in the top 10 of the Fortune 500. What is this doing to global competition? Because these guys presumably are on a much better wicket. They can get uh, their, their funding is much cheaper. I'm sure they have other benefits too. Let's draw a careful distinction between sovereign wealth funds, or as we at Deloitte like to call them, sovereign financial institutions, who are largely financial investment vehicles. And that is distinct from state-owned enterprises. And I think your question really went to state-owned enterprises, that is, businesses majority or 100 percent owned by the government. The basic view, I think, is that we should be open to investment, including from state-owned enterprises, but they should compete for those opportunities on what is called a competitively neutral basis, and that is they shouldn't enjoy special advantages, say for acquisition finance, just because they're government-owned. But so long as they're prepared to play by the rules and so long as their owner, the country involved, is prepared to start opening markets and moving these companies on a path to privatization, I think we should be open to any investment, including from state-owned enterprises, that doesn't compromise national security. How do you define national security, sir? Because um, in terms of how Australia should position itself and food security, uh, we're looking at a lot of potential Chinese investments, including buying our, our land and our agricultural companies. 
Well, I think each country needs to have its own definition of national security. In the United States, it's a relatively narrow term that is something that could affect the essential security interests of the United States. Australia and other countries need to make their own decision, but let's ultimately remember that investment flows create good jobs. That's also an important part of a nation's security. Free trade, flexible exchange rates, and the free flow of capital across borders based on an open investment policy are the key elements of a su successful global economy. And I think particularly at a time like this where we're seeing global economic recovery, but on a somewhat uneven and not yet sustainable basis, I think we should recommit to those three principles. Bob Kimmett, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you.